Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Project Pro Expert Talks. Uh, we have Sharon with us today. Uh, Sharon has been a data scientist for over eight years and is currently a data scientist with uh, Deloitte in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, he's also a, a Kaggle competitions expert and is currently ranked in the top 1% of Kaggle members. He's also found time to write two books in data science, which we'll talk about later in today's chat. And he also runs a YouTube channel where he has a very interesting um, learning series called How to Learn Data Science in 100 Days. Um, so, Sharon, thank you so much again. And Sharon, I would love to start by understanding, uh, can you unpack for us what a Kaggle competition expert is? What are the various levels? Uh, and how do you achieve uh, being a top 1% status in that? Yeah, okay. Uh, so like maybe before getting into the details, like uh, I, I'm no longer active in Kaggle. Like, uh, but whatever whatever I did, like maybe early in my career, like, uh, like uh, I think my last competition was about five years back. But uh, this, the the points that I received at that at that point in time, it's still like uh, maybe, maybe like uh, uh, helping me in retaining my position. Mm -hmm. So at like, my best ranking, my highest ranking is in that maybe top zero five percentile, mm -hmm. and maybe my current ranking would be like maybe still in between three to four percentile in the top three to four percentile. Okay. So. Uh, so what helped me is uh, like I uh, started Kaggle because I wanted to learn. So as a platform, it is like really a good platform for anyone who's trying to learn data science. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's the platform which helped me to understand the different algorithms, like which algorithm should be used in what type of scenarios, what type of data sets uh, uh, would be suitable for which type of algorithms. So all these knowledge, like which comes only through experience, I was able to get all these experience from Kaggle. Like one thing I, I used to do was like at, at, at the point in time, like I used to be actively involved in at least one casual competition at any point in time. So like I, I used to, I used to like after what I used to spend at least like two hours every day to focus on my learnings and a particular competition that I used mm -hmm. to read almost every, uh, every uh, post. So there used to be a discussion uh, forums. So I used to uh, read all the discussions that is happening about the model and mm -hmm. about the data set. And that helped me a lot, like uh, not only to uh, to excel in Kaggle, but also to excel as a data scientist. So, like, okay. And how many competitions do you typically have to submit a solution for uh, for you to get a high rank ranking like this? Uh, so, like, uh, to get into like uh, maybe like into the top five percentile uh, yeah. in a competition, like uh, a, a typical competition would have uh, at least thousand users participating. Uh, so to get into the top five percentile, mm -hmm. it takes some time. Like, uh, uh, so I usually start quite early. So whenever a competition launches, like I used to take part in those competitions because it gives enough runway in uh, like in fine tuning the models, in uh, better understanding the data set. Like uh, maybe uh, on an average, like some of the competitions in which I, like, I was ranked in maybe the top five percentile or maybe in the top ten, uh, I would have submitted maybe at least fifty. 50 or like sometimes even like I would have made about 100 submissions. Wow. Uh, I just like that, that there was a limitation of three submissions per day. Mm -hmm. So like uh, it used to be like definitely like uh, maybe close to close to 100 okay. submissions. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um, I also noticed that on your blog, uh, you wrote about a topic <clears throat> that is a favorite among people who are watching this uh, interview, which is how to get your first data science job. Uh, could you elaborate on that? Maybe just list down the top three things that are most critical in that journey. Uh, yeah, so like, uh, the top critical things are like, you, you need to be, uh, you need to be up to date with, like, with the current technologies. So how to, how to make yourself up to date with the current technology is like, for example, Tadle runs and survey. So they, they run a survey which has respondents like uh, this year, they had about 20,000 plus respondents. So it has various questions about the tools that are being used by data scientists on their job. So it helps to understand what are all the various tools and technologies that a data scientist on a job is currently using. So try to get an understanding of all those tools, all those technologies, familiarize yourself with all those things that helps you to stay relevant uh, in a current scenario. Because if there is a job opening, most of the questions would be based on the current trends. Maybe after that, like I would suggest like uh, anyone who is looking for a job in data science should be really strong in the basic concepts. So you need not be an expert in a particular area. 
but you need to be really strong in the basics, like the basic statistics, pandas, numpy, and basic visualization. How to how to handle all the missing data, the like typical data issues. So some basic understanding like is really a must. And next, like they, uh, they need to have a portfolio for themselves. So having a portfolio is really important when going for a job interview because there is mm-hmm. there are like hundreds of people applying for uh, for the same job positions, mm-hmm. and the portfolios would differentiate like from a good candidate to a bad candidate. Like it's very easy to see their portfolio, and then to uh, like it helps in actually like uh, maybe securing an interview at least mm-hmm. and maybe ah. last yeah sorry sorry go ahead I'll, I'll let you finish yeah last is like networking like you need to have a good network and uh, that helps a lot actually yeah okay and when you talk about portfolio right uh, you, when you are interviewing people on the other side of this thing how many projects do you expect to see in this portfolio is it two is it 20 is it 50 like what is is there a number or is it the of course it's a quality but wh- what do you like to see in this portfolio uh, maybe I, I would like to see a variety uh, mm-hmm. So maybe like uh, it could be like uh, maybe two or three uh, projects should be uh, should be okay, but there should be some variety like uh, different areas. So that like if there is a variety, that means that uh, the candidate is actually trying to learn like different things like different components of data science. Mm-hmm. So so uh, apart from quality, one thing that mm-hmm. I would look for is variety. So maybe definitely like uh, having a large number of portfolio is also not so good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maybe sticking sticking on, sticking on to just few and then digging very deep into those uh, those few portfolios and then having an expert knowledge in those portfolios that you have developed would mm. be would be better as mm. compared to having a larger number of projects. I would say. And uh, to your <coughs> other point about networking, which is a great point, how do you suggest new aspiring data scientists to network? Is it cold ping people on LinkedIn? How how should they start go, going about that? Uh, I think like with the COVID situation, like just things have been very tough, but uh, I used to expand my network by participating in various meetup competitions, like meetups. So uh, in Bangalore, especially the, there used to be a lot of meetups and I used to make sure that I participate at least like uh, two meetups in a particular month. So that helps to meet a lot of new people to understand of different people, like what different organizations are uh, like are doing in data science. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is there are various organizations, for example, something like data kind. Uh, so these are all the organization that work on projects, uh, which like doesn't give you money, but actually which can make a difference in the life of the people. Mm-hmm. So like, uh, so those kind of pro- like you can maybe check out for those kind of organization and then start engaging with those uh, those organizations that helps a lot in meeting new people and uh, that helps a lot in uh, gaining the good quality experience as well yeah okay okay and um, so this point about networking uh, brings me to another blog of yours which i came across which is that everyone should have a mentor in their data science career uh, can you talk about these critical things your mentors helped you uh, any specific inflection points that the guidance they gave actually really impacted you that'll be helpful yeah, the, the some of the critical things was uh, like was uh, um, I, I used to be interested in a lot of a lot of things like uh, data science is really huge and then it's very tempting to learn a lot of lot of things and then try a lot of things at the same time and uh, like you have an ultimate objective but mm-hmm. uh, you are tempted to like you are you will be tempted to and you will be pulled across into multiple areas. Mm. Having a mentor helped me in focusing my goals. Like it helped mm. me exactly like, to identify okay like what I'm good at and. Uh, so having a third person's point of view, so it helped me in, um, while speaking to my mentor, I used to do a lot of introspection. Mm-hmm. So I used to like, uh, have a good understanding about myself, what is my strength, weakness, so that I can communicate that to my, my mentor. So that uh, as well helped me a lot in understanding myself more, uh, um, understanding myself better. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, like uh, whenever, whenever I needed some help or contacts, my mentor was able to help me. So okay. my mentor was like, uh, uh, so uh, is Derek Joes from Flutura. So Flutura mm-hmm. is my first organization where I started yeah. my data science career. Mm-hmm. So he used to like uh, provide me a lot of inputs, a lot of materials, and uh, uh, he used to connect me with a lot of interesting people. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Interesting. Okay. So helps you focus, helps you discover your strengths, and then connects you to more people. Yeah. Uh, okay. Understood. That's, that's great. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, Sharon, is you have a book out there on Amazon, uh, which is Mastering Social Media Mining Using R. Uh, yep. Can you elaborate on why this topic needs an entire book and why you chose R instead of Python? 
uh, that'll be helpful. Uh, yeah, so why I chose R instead of Python was uh, like this book was written like maybe at, I think five years back. And at that point in time, like R was still popular. Yeah. And a lot of data scientists were using R. And then mm. this, the trend is slightly like changed in the last two years, like uh, yeah. Python became very popular. And why an entire book for itself was uh, because like uh, almost all the social media, like uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, even LinkedIn had their API open for a few months and, and then they restricted it. So like Instagram was also open, like there was no restrictions or, at that point in time. Even now, like you can gain an access, but uh, like you need to uh, get an, you need to submit and request and there is a process for it. And there is, there is lots of blogs, reviews, and then the, 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 quant the amount of data that is out there is so huge. And the number of use cases that we can implement using all those data is also huge. So okay. like, uh, so, uh, like uh, I would say like maybe, I can write maybe one more book as well on that particular topic because oh, wow. like, uh, the amount of data that is getting generated from these platforms are so much mm -hmm. and it has so many use cases. Okay, okay, excellent. So one of the questions I also wanted to ask you was what are your favorite online tools or resources that you keep going back to uh, to help you with your data science projects or your careers? And you already mentioned that you know the, the Kaggle uh, the, uh, tools uh, updates that they send out. But other than that, what else do you recommend people do? Uh, maybe apart from Kaggle, I would say like a medium like towards data science is a publication which has a lot of data science related content getting generated. Yeah, and uh, and there are there are there are a few websites like the KD Nuggets, which also has a lot of data science related articles, mm. and uh, and Data Science Central. So it is a community of data scientists where they again have a lot of a uh, lot of lot of articles as well as they post various data science related events. Mm -hmm. So maybe these are all the websites. Uh, so for example, Teddy Nuggets has a uh, newsletter, like once in a week newsletter, they curate all their best articles and then send out one newsletter in a week. Yeah. So that, that's not like kind of too much. And it's mm -hmm. really good to maybe go through all those newsletter. So mm -hmm. similarly, like Medium also like uh, curate like various mm -hmm. best articles and then they send mm -hmm. out a newsletter like once in a day. Mm -hmm. So these are all the places like where I get to know about the, uh, the most recent technologies or uh, data science career, like what's happening, what's, what's the trend currently. And it helps okay. me to like maybe keep up to date. Okay, understood. Okay, great. Now coming to your actual day-to-day -day work as a senior data scientist, in your data science projects, are there any favorite tactics or tips that you have to get your work and projects done efficiently? Uh -huh. Maybe like one thing that helps me a lot is having a template helps a lot. Mm. Uh, so not, not only in data science, like whatever work I'm currently doing. Mm -hmm. So if a particular work, if if I see a particular work getting repeated like uh, mm. at mm -hmm. least a few times, like if I'm if I foresee a particular work will be repeated at maybe two eyes or three eyes, I try to come up with a template. Uh, so for example, like uh, the articles, like I, I almost produce like uh, one article in two weeks. So what I do is I come up with a template. So before writing the article, I, I go to the template, just put on my ideas in the template, and that helps me a lot in making sure that it is it is getting done faster. So similarly on the projects. So uh, like having a template for some kind of a problem, like if it is forecasting, like have some kind of a template and have some kind of a template for the thinking or thought process as well. So if, if there is a churn, customer churn problem, like, uh, or whatever, whatever data science problem that you are trying to solve, what should be the template? Like what should be your thinking process? That helps a lot in maybe uh, in, uh, in making sure that the things are getting done faster. Okay, okay, super. Um, and uh, you know, coming to the final question of this, which is, you you know, to, you 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 said that portfolio is a really important thing for an aspiring data scientist to have. Uh, but when you're interviewing people um, uh, for potential jobs, uh, find they 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 have a reasonable resume, they have done some online courses, and the portfolio also you see some interesting projects. What else is usually missing? Uh, is this enough? I mean, because I'm sure everybody with a portfolio and a course doesn't get a job. What else is usually missing in a person with this and who has a job in data science? Uh, what is missing? Maybe I would say like what differentiates is a good understanding. Like mm. having a good portfolio, like having like knowing the basic strong sets, that's all fine. Mm. But you should be able to connect the knowledge with the practical use cases. Uh, so mm -hmm. some people like like uh, they they get to they tend to have like a 
good portfolios like they would have done various projects mm. but in the end of the day if you are not able to connect the various data science topics or the knowledge that you have with a particular mm. use case mm. uh, so i would say like maybe that helps in coming up with a structured way of thinking so not only the projects that you have done if you are given a new project if you have a structured and clear way of thinking that helps a lot in solving a problem so uh, maybe like i would be looking for uh, uh, maybe the clarity in thought and structured okay. way of thinking makes sense okay super um thank you very much uh, sharan this has been super helpful um you know i i hope a um, lot of people watching this will go ahead build on their portfolios get more structured thinking sign up to kd nuggets towards data science uh, and uh, start yeah. getting up to their top 1% on kaggle competitions like you did uh, thank you so much for your time Yeah no worries thanks thanks for uh, yeah. having me here absolutely